Yes, I was an iPhone 14 Pro Max user, but only really for its video quality. And since its release, I have been using the S23 Ultra. But this isn't like all those other, hey, I'm switching, I'm switching videos that have that cringe thumbnail to match. And you're probably thinking, well, this guy's just gonna go back to his iPhone after he publishes this video, right? Well, that isn't the case here for me, at least. I think the iPhone 14 Pro Max is pretty garbage, actually, compared to its predecessor. The 13 Pro had better battery life. This is buggy as anything, too. So I don't like it. In fact, it's going in the garbage. No, well, not actually in the garbage. I'll keep it just for camera comparisons. So the S23 Ultra, Samsung finally ditched that turd of a chipset, their own in-house chipsets, the Exynos. I was never a fan of them, and the S22 Ultra, for me, was plagued with bugs and lag, thermal throttling, terrible battery performance, and even after like 14 ridiculous amount of patches or something, it was still bad. And now I'll let you know my experience here after a month with the S23 Ultra. Now I do have this olive green color, which at times kind of looks like gray. I like it, it's a little different. So very good build quality. It's a large phone, it's a solid phone, it's heavy. Okay, it is 234 grams and about nine millimeters the thickness. Metal frame all around the outside and the screen is covered with that Gorilla Glass Victus 2. And does it scratch? Well, yes, it does. Now, I've just been placing the phone in my pocket with no screen protector on it because it didn't even have one in the box, which is a bit of a shame. And I've got a few, they're very hard to see on camera here. I've got a few faint scratches, there it is. One there, and I can actually just feel it with my finger. I didn't even know how this happened because I've not put like keys in my pocket or anything silly like that. Now the squared off corners and bottom doesn't make it uncomfortable to hold. Now the stylus, I barely kind of use this myself, apart from maybe just writing down a few little notes and a reminder to myself. And the latency of this pen, it is very, very good. The accuracy, you can see we've got the hover there and everything comes out really quick. If you're a stylus user, of course, then this is the phone to get, the flagship to get. So we've got a 6.8 inch 1440p screen. Very, very nice LTPO tech. And what I'm doing now, if you swipe down the toggles and you get everything there, notifications, if I did this on the S22 Ultra Exynos version, it would lag for me. Uh, I'm not joking, it would be really that bad. And it's not doing that at all. So One UI 5.1 performance is fantastic. I'm just summarizing here because I know everyone knows all the specs of everything. So I tend to run my S23 Ultra in the dark mode. Just to save a little on the battery, I force the motion smoothness on to adaptive, uh, but you can put it onto standard at 60 hertz if you want. Now I don't see it dropping down that refresh rate with the LTPO screen. I don't notice any lag, I don't notice it chopping down. It has been very good. So you've got all those typical settings there. Now the brightness does top out and peak at 1750 nits. It's super bright and here in direct sunlight you can make out that screen just fine for your text messages and everything you need to do. As for battery life, well, I normally get around six to eight hours of screen on time and it is excellent. You don't have to just listen to my claims here of the battery life. I'm sure there's a countless other videos that also will tell you that the S23 Ultra Thanks to that Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 has fantastic battery life. I can make it through a full day. Now the thermal throttling that I was originally seeing uh, dip in about 30% performance of the phone. Now on the latest patch, which is the April patch that I got, you can see it's 75%. Now this dip in performance, you're not gonna really notice. Even the lowest score loop here of this 20 minute stress test is still very good performance. Now gaming, you will not see any kind of real difference. But is it the fastest? No, other phones don't throttle as bad as the S23 Ultra. The loudspeakers are really great on the S23 Ultra. I don't see anyone complaining about them. Here's a sample of them at 100% volume. Over to the camera. So this is the front facing 12 megapixel camera. It's got autofocus. And what you're looking at now is the portrait video mode. So it's blurring out the background. And it makes it look like you're using, say, a DSLR with a really decent lens. Until you look at like the top of my hair, some areas, you can see that it's not quite perfect, but they have improved this a lot. It's very good. Now, the audio, I want to talk a little bit about that. I've got waves crashing in the background here, and it's doing a really decent job. So the audio bit rate is 256 kilobits per second, really high quality microphones. And I just love this audio quality from Samsung at the moment. I think they have improved it compared to the S. 22 Ultra that I had, the Exynos version, and we're shooting in 4K here with this portrait video. You can also do it with the main rear camera as well. 
and stabilization has really improved too I think compared to previous models probably down to the fact that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 is really helping out here so this is the ultra wide go over to our main camera now and panning around see it's looking pretty good I don't really see uh, a lot of that panning judder that I used to get a lot of and complain about so this is the three times now and then of course we've got that 10 times periscopic camera so I just use that to zoom in and that's only a 10 megapixel I don't find the quality of that to be absolutely amazing it's it's a weaker camera there and I'll just go back to the main camera and jog here to, to show you that stabilization how really good it is the only thing I have noticed that sometimes when you pan if you want to do a nice smooth pan there is a bit of lag sometimes when you start panning and it kind of quickly catches up I don't know if it's going to happen now but I have noticed that sometimes and of course the ultra wide that 12 megapixel one does use electronic image stabilization really good video quality here with Samsung's set of cameras and this is now 8k which I often do use but normally with the tripod and I disable image stabilization because image stabilization crops in quite aggressively and you're really only getting a quality that I think is about 6k upscale to 8k because of that crop because it's using the electronic image stabilization now it does look very good and you get more detail and a little bit more sharpness than just using the plain 4k but it is only the main 200 megapixel camera that does support 8k you can't swap over then to the ultra wide the zoom camera any of those at all and I have been using some of the 8k footage I've recorded on the s23 ultra here for some of my videos for example this e-bike video here that I'm showing you of this angry yes that's the name of it, it almost sounds like angry m20 e-bike and that was all shot on the Samsung Galaxy s23 ultra so I am impressed with the quality especially when you're down size down scale sorry 8k to 4k it makes that 4k look a lot sharper and almost the same kind of level of sharpness as my Sony a6400 and can it take stunning photos you bet you it can this is the ultra wide this shot a uh, very clear day here definitely helped out and yes if you crop in you can see a little bit of edge blurring from the ultra wide lens now this shot here is the main camera the 200 megapixel sensor and i think it looks fantastic captured all those colors of the flower not only that look at the detail and lovely natural background blur too from it this shot here is a dog just enjoying the water obviously but it's the 10 times optical zoom camera and I thought it came out all right but what I have noticed with the 10 times optical camera 10 megapixels it does have a lot of background noise as I crop in and zoom in now this shot of this very cheeky pigeon you can see all that noise in the background which kind of ruins this shot a little bit this now is the three times camera this other shot of that same pigeon Portrait shots can be a little hit and miss. If you zoom in and take a look at the background blur there, there is a bit of noise and the stitching around my girls here, not amazing. However, other photos can come out just fine like this shot. I've also been using the S23 Ultra to take a lot of photos of some of the products I'm testing out. As I'm out and about, I don't have to take my heavy DSLR camera. I can just pop a shot like this one, for example. Now this new latest April patch is meant to fix the focus. Focus issues like this. For example, I tapped on those wireless microphones, but it focused instead on, you can see, those olives in the background, not the product. So that's why it's a little hit and miss, but it's still kind of happening, especially in low light, even with this apparent autofocus fix. Having that 10 times zoom optical camera is great for sightseeing. So here in Barcelona, I decided I'll zoom in, get some more details here, and you can see Without cropping in, the photo looks fine, okay? But if you do crop with that 10 megapixel sensor, the noise, the noise again creeps into it, kind of ruining the shot. How's the HDR performance? Well, this is the main camera, and I think it does come out very good. You can see, yes, there is a bit of noise looking at the left-hand side on that boat, but overall, not a bad shot, even though some people did say it looks a little too dark. I happen to like it. For me, the biggest letdown is this front-facing camera. It's great that it's got autofocus, it does have 4K support, but I just found the HDR, and even with the new patch, it's still the same. It's still like this. It will often just overdo it. So the HDR here didn't capture that sun at all. It's just overexposed it. The rear camera does a much better job. 
And sadly, with our night mode, I'm still seeing the issues that I've seen before. And this is the latest patch. This is the one that came out in April, even though they're still saying it's like a March patch. I don't believe it's the big camera update, but you can see the Xiaomi 13 Pro with its one inch sensor outperforms, clearly outperforms an S23 Ultra. Captures more detail, better exposure. Just look where I've highlighted those areas there. You can see with the plants. It's looking a lot better with the Xiaomi 13 Pro. This is an area where Xiaomi does lag behind, especially when you take shots like this. Okay, the night sky, you can see there's this texture there. There's this noise to the sky that I don't like, and it looks a bit purplish. I like my night shots to actually look like night shots. This is more becoming like something that's like a dawn shot or almost daylight, how bright it is. So the brightness is great. There's still just so much room for improvement, I feel, with low light photos from Samsung. And there's a lot of things I haven't talked about that this phone does. Otherwise, this video would be 20, 30 minutes long or something. Of course, I've got the stylus support. If you need a flagship with a stylus, then hey, this is the one to get. You've got all the software optimizations with One UI, with the stylus, with the multitasking. And then we've got Video L, their desktop mode two and fast USB, USB 3.1 transfers. Fantastic. Battery life is very decent. Charging time is meh. You know, it's not really that good. It's just under an hour and, ugh, you know, in 2023, is that acceptable? I think it is just, but really they should jump on to 120 watt charging or even faster if they can, would be really good. The wireless charging as well is, is even slower there too, but uh, it's not, you know, it's not a deal breaker, not at all. Screen's great, I love it. I, I don't mind this slight curvature to the edges of it, build quality. It's all there, it's got a lot going through it for it. And the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 for me is the big game changer here because if you had the Exynos version or if you got the S22 Ultra Exynos, we got screwed over, then you definitely wanna get this. Now, if you've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 version, it's not worthwhile. I don't think it's worthwhile to upgrade. And if, even if you've got a kind of last gen phone that's still pretty good, I wouldn't upgrade either. Now let's talk about the uh, depreciation on this model here and the previous ones. It's absolutely terrible with Samsung. And this is where Apple's good. And no, I'm not an, an Apple fanboy at all, but the iPhones hold their value so much better. And Samsung's set to just really drop that value down, especially with their terrible trade-ins they give on these models now. So I can't wait to sell this in a year's time. I'm joking here, of course for only 600 euros or trade it in for 500 euros. Absolutely terrible depreciation. That's one thing I hope that Samsung can do something about by just offering better trade-in values when the S24 Ultra comes out. So there we go. That is uh, my thoughts, my story, my one month later review, you could say, of the S23 Ultra. I'll be keeping it and it definitely does get a big thumbs up from me, but I just want to see Samsung squeeze out the maximum potential out of those cameras with some firmware updates.